What did you Google, Taylor? It's not gonna show up. Just You're Google right. the, the trailer. Oh, it's on the trailer. Yeah, Google the trailer for Drive. Well, you look I'm buff today, it. Taylor. <laughs> You look diesel as shit. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> I never seen that. <laughs> 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 he looked at you, he saw a certain angle. Hey, you look fuck today, Dilla! His autism just slipped right out. Dilla! You look fuck today! You do look buff, though. You look diesel. Hey, what are you deadlift, Dilla? Why the fuck you get all them muscles in a week? <laughs> Damn, Taylor, you look buff. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Lynch. <laughs> Press play, Taylor. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezekiah Walker. Yo. The dream killer. <laughs> the dream killer. You are Stop the it. dream killer, yo. Who that, who Why do you want to kill who the dream that? chaser's dream, yo? I have never seen anybody be on Meek like this since Aubrey Graham, yo. What's I'm not up? on Meek. What are you talking about? I love Meek. What's I said up? free Meek. What's I'm the only up? ones defending Meek, saying he's not gay. He don't want to be in these situations. I'm the only one on the internet saying that. But you keep that. bringing him back to the game. He's a victim. <laughs> okay, that, that maybe. He's allegedly. a victim in allegedly. the joke. Allegedly. Allegedly. He's a victim of the joke. In the, in in the, the joke. joke. Yeah, Even in the, in the joke, joke in he's the joke. a victim. Definitely. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be there. I'm you, Team Meek, bro. You did the forum this weekend. The forum was crazy. How did it feel? Crazy, amazing. Thank you so much, everybody came out. That was awesome. How did it feel? Um, uh, it... I didn't feel anything until I drove up and I saw it in the distance and the forum. Like when you look at Madison Square Garden or you look at a lot of like arenas that are like in a city, they're like all blocked by other massive buildings. Mm -hmm. But the forum is, it looks like the fucking Roman Coliseum. It has yeah, like yeah, the yeah. columns and the red behind it. And then it's this massive parking lot around it. So it's the only structure in a five mile radius. And that was like that was kind of profound. I'm not That's what lie. Magic won rings. And That's what things. Kareem won rings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Magic was probably in the showers taking beautiful women down in the eighties. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to feel you had to feel something. Well, they did a renovation since then. Oh, they did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they sanitize I the think place? That's what they did. I don't <laughs> even think they renovated it. I think they just did Purell. <laughs> shout out to the forum, man. No, shout out to everybody that came out, man. That was fucking awesome. Dude. No, I had I had homeboys texting me while you was there. People was texting me while you was there. Man, man yeah. You decided you. to just evascerate. Is that the word? Evascerate. Eviscerate. Eviscerate. I, I like evascerate. Yeah. I, I evascerate it, bro. Yo, I, hey, three times uh, New York Times bestselling author right here. <laughs> I've like, never claimed right to be able to pronounce nothing. You evas you evascerate. Why do you keep doing that to me? Why do you keep doing this word I can't pronounce to me? <laughs> I thought the joke was about Diddy. Diddy joke, fair game at this point. It's Diddy joke. You know? I did a Diddy joke. But damn, Meek. Yo, I love Meek. I love Meek. I know. I All know right? you do. One of my favorite songs is uh, Tory Lanez and Meek. This is what I told Andrew, man. And this is, what? I, this is what I really mean. And um, I love saying things like this because I know it's going to piss off a whole bunch of black comedians. How are you out hip-hopping the black comedians? Yes. Yeah. How, how, how you going to make Why this? Why you going to do that? How you going to make this? Brutal. <laughs> how is he? How is he? Don't let them do this to us, comedians. How? Don't let him do it to us. Why y'all not giving Andrew no smoke on Club Shay Shay? Stand he, United. <laughs> Stand United. How is he out hip-hopping the black comedians? How? This was, wait, this wait, was wait. a per Play the joke, Taylor. This is a perfectly executed cultural hip hop joke. 
Where is the joke at? Oh, oh my God, Taylor. Go, <laughs> go, <laughs> greatest go producer. Andy. Greatest producer in all podcasting. Go to greatest Andy's producer show. in all podcasting. If there's one thing Taylor's hey, going to hey. do is going to keep you humble. <laughs> go, to, go to his page and go to, go to his page, Where Taylor. is the joke? You see Diddy's house right there. Yeah. Okay. Time out. First of all, this is hilarious because just seeing you standing there like this. Yeah. With the caption Diddy's house, you don't know if it's about to be something serious <laughs> or, or a joke. <laughs> like fresh play Taylor. LA, I got tired of the media trying to smear this great city. They're saying you're a bunch of fucking criminals, drug addicts, and pedophiles. That is not the whole city. That is a very small, specific section of the city. It's called Diddy's house. That is th listen. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Did he go the to jail? What's the over under? Someone asked Shohei Otani. I know he got the. <laughs> Those Japanese love gambling, bro. Or I believe they call it driving. But whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just everybody. This is the shot. only reason I think he might be guilty. <laughs> Every celebrity in LA has had their home robbed except Diddy. And I thought about it. It's like, bro, robbing Diddy is terrifying because what if he's there? <laughs> you break down the door, he's butt naked on the couch. Meek Mill sitting on his lap, just, just, just petting him like a Maltese cat. Just, Meek Mill crying, oh no, wait a minute, I thought you was finished. <laughs> he's like, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> you try to run out, you run out, the door is locked. You turn around, all of a sudden you hear, <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. I can't be stopped now. It's your asshole tonight. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. God damn. Uh, if there was a nuclear weapon in the form of a stop, joke. Stop it. <laughs> God damn, man. Hezzy Shima. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like that. <laughs> God, man. So I posted it yesterday <laughs> on Instagram. It, it, it shows up, no caption, won't let me comment or won't let anybody comment. I'm like, oh, fuck, what's going on? I thought the joke is flagged. I get a text from you immediately. You go, yo, what happened to the joke? I sent that to the group chat. <laughs> I say, I'm like, bro, I think Diddy's involved with Facebook or something. Every time I try to post it, it's, it doesn't show up. Like, I'm literally thinking there's a conspiracy uh, of the ages. I think it was the pedophiles. Bro, no, I'm not even joking. Facebook was down and Instagram was down oh, for a few hours during the day. It was? Yeah. Oh. We reposted the joke and all the, the, the curse words out, everything out, didn't matter. Well, that is a phenomenal joke, Seth. <laughs> it was, I mean, it's just a phenomenal joke. It's one of those jokes, even if you're the main victim of the joke. You gotta give it up. It's comedy. You gotta kind of chuckle. It's comedy, man. You gotta chuckle. Then you gotta laugh at that. Yeah. Great <laughs> fucking joke. Um, poor Meek, man. Yo, you keep bringing Meek <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> What about Shohei Otani? I don't even know who the fuck that was. So that's that's why this. Is, I didn't know who that was. So this is deep. Okay. This this deep cut. So Shohei Otani is the Japanese baseball player that got that like seven hundred million dollar oh, yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, plays okay. for the L.A. Dodgers, gotcha. so he's L.A. Okay, and he got in trouble because his he said he paid his interpreter four million dollars so his interpreter could pay off a debt. Okay, but people are like, why would your interpreter be able to rack up a four million dollar debt? So they started to go, oh, this motherfucker's gambling. And then they changed the story to, uh, oh, my interpreter stole $4 million from me. Oh. So okay. he was, so that was probably, a deep, That's the L.A. deep cut. So, yeah, so the got joke. You, got you, yeah, got you, it got wasn't you. just Meek. <laughs> I, didn't get the show, I didn't get that one, but I liked it because I liked the follow-up because I immediately understood the follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese Club Candy. So I had another one. Oh, they call that driving. I cut it, I cut it on the clip, but I had another one because I kind of fucked it up, but they, they call him the Japanese uh, Babe Ruth. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, or as I call him, uh, the great bamboo stick. <laughs> 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 Fucking terrorist, man. Yes. <laughs> Fucking terrorist. This is a terrorist right here, man. Um, but once again, Andrew Schultz is out here popping all the black comedians. Yo, no, stop man. trying no, to create no, no, these no, narratives. No, no, Don't let no, Charlamagne no, create no, these no. narratives. How Comedians do, you, because, do not let because, this happen. Because how do you not, as a comedian, have that? Or maybe they're just maybe they're still working it out in the comedy clubs and stuff like that. And wow. because a lot of people, that's a very risky joke to do in front of 
eighteen thousand people. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of. You know what I'm saying? You you in front of eighteen thousand people, you want you kind of want to go out there with your best shit, right? Yeah, I, I didn't know that we were going to, I mean, like, I, I had no clue. Like, I literally was like 15 minutes before I went out, and I was like, oh, fuck. Because I got to L.A., I was telling everybody on flagrant yeah. this, but, like, I got to L.A. Friday, because I was like, let me try to work out some local shit. Yeah. Because sometimes I like to do some local stuff, you know, to start the show. And I went out Friday night, and every local thing I was doing was bombing. Really? So I was like, that joke? fuck. No, I didn't, 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 okay, okay, that. Okay, okay. I didn't even think of that one yet. And then it was literally like 30 minutes before the show. And I was like, man, what can I open up with locally? None of this local shit is, is hitting. And then I was like, oh, fuck. It's not about L.A. It's about Diddy. That's the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah, the fucking yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm simply saying is, man, I think that uh, folks are using a lot of their best material on podcasts. Ooh. And I think, it's, I think some of these takes do serve better on the stage. If you were to say that same thing on a podcast, it's still funny because you're a comedian and people know it, right. but it's different when you see it on the stage. When you see you it on the stage, it's, it's a joke. It's art. It's nothing else yeah, but a joke. It. It's just a joke. That's right. Yeah. On a podcast, people it's can like, take this it. This is how I feel. I need you to that's know right. this. This that's is right. beef. Let's fucking that's right. fight. No. That's right. Once you, It's like seeing something in a song. Yeah. If you're in a podcast, Bro, imagine DMX was singing that song with all the girls, but he was just saying it in a podcast. It was Keisha. Yeah, you'd be like, God <laughs> damn. He's a hoe. Yeah. <laughs> was he at the forum with Magic in the 80s? Yes. <laughs> you know God what I'm saying? <laughs> but in a song. It's funny. It's, it's fire. Funny. That's right. That's right. That's right. So yeah, right place, right time. Speaking of beef, Gerard Carmichael. Uh, he, um... What happened with Gerard? Played Gerard. <laughs> played Gerard. <laughs> what she said, yeah. Played Gerard. <laughs> I love Gerard Carmichael. I want the record to show. Say what happened with Gerard? I want to put that on record before I comment on any of this. Press play. This is his reality show on HBO. Yes. Let me hold. Let me read the headline first, Taylor. This is from Neighborhood Talk. OMG, Gerard Carmichael confronts Tyler, the creator, about avoiding him after he confessed his feelings for him. Tyler then laughed in his face while remembering he replied back, stupid bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. I mean, that seems like the most Tyler answer. Kind of felt like a distance between us. I have an idea of what it is, but what I think, what do you think made that it is awkward. It's because I told you I had feelings for you, and you, we didn't talk about it ever. That was like weird. I don't know if it was just too awkward to talk about or too. I don't know. I don't know. Like it's just like I feel like you left me hanging out there a little bit, like. Like, when you said that, I think I replied with, like, something super mad, normal, regular, like... You laughed and called me stupid, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler's, Tyler's the man, yeah. Man, Tyler's you know what's so man, crazy yeah. about this? I remember one time... Too. How, how many times do I going to come out, yo? How many times? How many times can you come, come out? out man? How many times <laughs> can you come out? <laughs> how many times? Gerard has done, like, three of these. The what only, is the show about? Is it coming I out again? Know. He is about his lifestyle. Like I watched some of it. About being gay? Man, he did this yeah, before. A couple <laughs> years ago, he did this. He told his, I think his mom and grandma he was gay. Nobody really cared. Bro, I thought but, he had a terminal illness. But during... <laughs> I, I literally, I was like, there's no way. But during... You know, there's no way he's coming out as gay again. <laughs> again. Then he but did he's going back and forth, though. He's going back and forth on the stage, like him telling it as a joke versus... Oh. What you told us in Rothaniel, I guess this right here, I haven't watched it yet, but it seems like this is more just of an exploration of his actual life, because I saw the trailer of him sucking toes, sucking white men's toes and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, I don't know what... Oh. It wasn't a black man, but it was a white man. Yeah, well, uh, it was an Asian something, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you what's so funny about this. <laughs> I remember the last time Gerard did How'd you Breakfast know? Club. How did you know what it was? What? The, the foot. Oh, I just saw the trailer. I just know it's not black. Yeah, but the bottom of our feet are all white. I know, that's why I gave. That's why I did it wide. I said white, Asian. Anybody that but could he be said that not black, either. it could be black. No, nah, he wasn't no. black. No, nah, he definitely the, wasn't black. A bottom of a no, black no, no, man's foot you can is see a the white whole man's foot. foot. Pull it up, Taylor. So he can see. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it up so he can see this. Yo, come on this, now, this Taylor. Let's get foot. that foot action. Pull it up so hey, you can see this feet white don't foot. Have gender, Gerard Carmichael. Feet Carl Michael's don't mouth. have gender. A foot is a foot. You know what's so crazy? Last time Gerard did Breakfast Club, I don't know if it was the last time, but I just remember me and Gerard talking. This one we was in the old studio. He came out. But no, he was talking to me about how dope Tyler the Creator was, 
and I think I missed the whole point of the conversation. Oh, he was flirting. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Maybe I thought he was talking about rap when he, he was, was flirting. talking about something else. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, Tyler the Creator is dope, and he's bigger than people even realize. You know what, what I mean? <laughs> I was talking about him as an artist. <laughs> he's Yo, bigger what? than people even realize. <laughs> you started it. Yeah. So, no, you really started it. Yeah. You didn't even want none of that until you was talking about his meat. <laughs> you meat checked him live right. on a breakfast club. No, we weren't. This wasn't even on the air. Off air, you meat checked him. This was just us having a conversation. I didn't meat check him. He nah. was just talking to me about Tyler and has Tyler ever been up here? You and meat checked Tyler no, in front of him. Man. And he was like, I need that. He was like, Yo, has Tyler ever been on Breakfast Club? I'm like, Nah, Tyler never been on Breakfast Club. And he was like, Man, Tyler's dope. Yada yada yada. I'm like, Yeah, Tyler is dope, man. I said, And he's bigger than you know people even realize. I don't know. I didn't know Gerard was talking about something else. But what happened? What you mean? When you said that sentence, what happened next? I think I kind of realized after the after that fact of the conversation that, oh no, you you talking about something else. And I think I realized that he had a crush on him. I thought they actually was dating back in the day, to be honest, but I guess not. If if Tyler curved him. What did you Google, Taylor? It's not gonna show up. I'm trying to say Just Google the, the trailer. Oh, it's on the trailer. Yeah, Google the trailer for Dry. Well, you look buff today, Taylor. <laughs> You look diesel as shit. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're wearing that shit Drake be wearing on stage. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> I never seen that. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> Yo, son. You don't think son. so? <laughs> I have a surprise. Charlamagne you know. got no. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no he got no control of what's <laughs> everything <laughs> above the neck. He cannot control. Below the neck, maybe, but this shit right here. He looked at you saw a certain angle. <laughs> hey, you look fuck today, Della. <laughs> it's all this. I'm just slip right out. Della, you look fuck today. She do. <laughs> hey, what are you deadlift, Della? Don't look like that. that she like she got that shirt drink me wearing on stage, man. No. <laughs> and you got your look, natural hair out. Excuse me. Talk to me nice to have a surprise for you afterwards. Woo. But y'all got to... Act correct. And I like how you low key call Drake buff on stage. <laughs> no, Drake wears this shirt that makes him. It's a fake shirt. It's the fake muscles. You didn't know that? But you think that Taylor got fake muscles? Wait, Drake? No, wearing... no, no, no. Drake wears this fake shirt on stage. You ain't seen that shit? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's what, like a... you, what is our? No, this is not, not fake. Like Taylor, this is not like a fucking shirt. Taylor, Shut what's up. the surprise? You do look buff though. You look diesel. <laughs> Taylor, tell us the what? surprise. Are you gonna tear a phone book in half or something? What, what's <laughs> <laughs> I said talk to me nice, right? I am talking to you nice. A natural hair, though. Natural <laughs> hair don't yeah, he care. Said, he said, he said, Taylor, you look bald. No protective hair style. You look diesel. 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 You look You look diesel. You look diesel. You look diesel. You look You look Look at you. I thought yeah. she get all the muscles in a week. <laughs> Damn, Taylor, you look buff. <laughs> <laughs> well, Becky Lynch. Yo. Press play, Taylor. Is there more toe sucking? Nah, that's just... it. Here's the thing, man. That's, that was... How do we feel about... That's all first episode. On camera honesty. It feels forced. Uh, I think he's trying to call himself out. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? It is like he was like, I'm trying to be as truthful as possible on camera. And then I think his friend goes, You can't be truthful. There's cameras everywhere. That's my something. point. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like it's so. It just seems forced. Like yes, like you sucking toes. I don't need to see you do that in order to say, Oh, Gerard Carmichael is being honest. Yeah, <clears throat> you know when I saw Gerard host the, uh, what did Gerard host? What was it that he hosted? Uh, the Global Awards? Golden Globes, maybe. I don't know. It was one of those award shows. Mm -hmm. I felt like Golden there, Globes. Golden, Golden Globes. Globes. I yeah. felt like there was a level of honesty in his monologues. Mm. You know what I mean? So I don't need you to be sucking toes on camera to be like, oh, Gerard's being honest. Do you think we don't do you think he believes that uh, we don't believe he's gay? Does he feel like he needs to prove the homosexuality? Well, you shouldn't be sucking toes then. You gotta suck a dick on camera. <laughs> sucking toes on camera don't necessarily make you gay. Who says he doesn't? Well, but who said? I first of all, I agree with you on that. Yeah, sucking suck toes, toes don't make, don't you, make gay. you gay. A foot is a foot. A foot is a foot. Suck a dick. Suck a dick. You're trying to prove you're gay. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I don't care. I need something to over there with your buff like, ass. My, my nah, buff ass. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, people do shit like that on Fear Factor challenges. Like, all right, you suck some toes. That is like, true. Uh, that is more of a game show experience. Yeah. Sucking a foot is more of a game show experience. Like, Come sucking on. a dick. I say that's equally bad, bro. You no, think sucking not. a toe is like sucking no, a not. dick? Suck a man's toe? No. Like, think about the optics of that. It, don't worry about like, man or female. It's just a toe. Oh, what no, is that no, toe done? No, no, but that's the difference. If it's another man's toe, it's way different. No, I it's not. I think the manlyhood starts at the ankle. I think the foot is. <laughs> I think a foot is fair game, dude. A, a beautiful foot is oh, a beautiful so, foot. So when you're looking at feet online, <laughs> you, you don't. If it catches <laughs> me, if I don't know. Chris, why you looking like you sucked a man's toe before? Why are you looking at us like you sucked to me? I was oh. just thinking about it. I did see a Japanese of course you did. game you show. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> of course you fucking saw a Japanese game show where they're sucking toes. No, too. not toes. Oh, what? It was a gay porn star. The challenge was, could he suck a straight? No, it was a not a porn star, a gay man trying to suck a straight porn star's dick to see if he could make him come on the TV show. That was the That's the type of shit they showing over in Taiwan, Chris? Yeah, and it was crazy. Yo, yo China, invade. <laughs> yo, China, invade. It's getting crazy over what there. What the fuck? They need the a little craziest, bit of order. The they thing need was, a little bit of discipline. It was on during the middle of the day, and what? I was watching it with all my wife's relatives. We were just sitting on a couch, and that yo, was what was I'm on I'm not going to lie. Japan is like 30 years ahead in game yeah, shows. Game they got shows one are game nuts. show where like... You got to try to sing karaoke while a girl is jerking you off. Really? And you got to see, see if you get through the whole song before she makes you nut. Damn. That's the show. I believe it. Did he nut? Yeah. The 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 guy. Uh... <laughs> what did your family do? So you watched the completion, bro? What did your family do? <laughs> With so, your family? What did your family? <laughs> By the way. <laughs> I'm sold. I want to watch. I'm looking for this shit online later. It was crazy because one of the guys is basically incapacitated. I mean, he was like 85 years old. He couldn't move. He was in a chair. And so I didn't want to... He seemed to be watching it. So yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. Even, You think by choice he was watching or he was just watching the news before and then this fucking... I have no idea what was going on. It was one of the wildest things I've ever seen, though. It was crazy. And did he react in any way to it? Nothing. No What's reaction whatsoever. Show? Just... It was just a regular Japanese... They run a lot of Japanese programming. And the they got the, the game shows are nuts in Japan. But they got the nerve to talk about Western civilization and how bad we are. And it's, they banning our shit from TikTok over there. And nah, they showing nah, shit China. like that. That's China. This is Japan. Oh. Japan stays wild now. I'm not going to lie. Damn. But yeah, don't that's they crazy. blur private parts in there? Well, yeah, they, they, they blur it. They do blur it. I think they had to... Little like, blurs? <laughs> very substantial blurs. Very tiny hey, blurs. capping in their blurs. They blur up the year. Hey, come on, Japan. No, but they stopped uh, showing uh, intercourse. I think because I think the people just stopped having sex. Like in Japan, they have like they this have negative a population birth rate. Issue, they have yeah. like a population issue. People aren't fucking. They won't flirt. But they'll have game shows of all this shit going on. But it stops with porn. I think so. That's. There's not a lot of the, the culture doesn't have a lot of romance. There's no like uh, you know how like Latin culture has charisma, like like it's it's like in Latin cul culture to like charm, and it's in Latin culture for women to be seductive, even if they're being seductive in a silly way. It's still part of the culture, and like yeah. the men to be like charming to women. A, a Latin dude might be charming to an old woman he would never even try to sleep with, but it's just part of it. Mm -hmm. Calling her beautiful, and Japan doesn't have. There's a rigidity with the genders. Yeah, really? like, I mean, that game of sexual acts well, so it's like you're taking dude, away all the romance out of it no but you're really what's really interesting is that they gamify and commodify everything you can rent a dad for the day what like there are women that do it that like they don't have a dad so they rent a dad for the day <laughs> dead ass <laughs> they do this is, you can, like, you can please keep me off the pole <laughs> <laughs> for real though like so you rent a dad you could just have a cuddle buddy you could rent by like 15 minutes. They've, wow. they've basically commodified and gamified every aspect of being a human. What are dad duties? So they don't duties? have to be it. Say again? What are dad duties? Google that, Taylor. I would love it. What are dad duties? If you rent I mean, a dad. This is just so funny. A black guy going, <laughs> what is dad, dad do? No, I'm saying. Like, even you're a dad. <laughs> What's a dad duty? But like, either you're a dad or you're you hang out with him or something? But that's my point. Like, what is a dad duty when you rent a dad? Like, what is the dad expected to do? Go to the park to with yeah. them. Ask you questions. How's your day? Go take you out to get some... Uh, you don't. Froyo. Yo. Google Japanese dad. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Nice.
<laughs> I'm telling you, that's you what I'm trying to tell you. you. Kangaroo. That's what I'm telling the you, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hope you yeah, don't know steroids or nothing. Like, so, what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> I hope you don't know steroids or nothing, Taylor. You think so. First of all, <laughs> you again, might. I have been working out when I'm doing a lot with my arms, actually. Put rent. Put rent that dad duties in uh, Japan. I'm looking at it right now. Buy some just thick. So you just can like, rent them for... <laughs> What does it say here? Conversations, mm -hmm. outings, mm -hmm. helping around the house with tasks, mm -hmm. even giving you life advice. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So why is it not renegade friend? Like, why does it have to be a father? Right and dad in 275. I don't even know if you're allowed to be gay in Japan. I wonder if that's, that might be illegal. 75? It's illegal to be gay in Japan, Chris? I don't know. I, no I don't know if gay no marriage idea. is legal, though. No idea. The culture is rigid, man. 275. Shout out to all the dads out there making money being rented. And listen, what if you have real kids? Like, if you have real kids, do you still... They got to pay, too. Okay. So, because clearly you would need to be a father in order to be rented. Like, you'd have to be a father already. Yes, you have to have the experience. Okay. 100%. Okay. okay. Wedding cost, 15000 Oh, wow. A, a dad wedding. attending a wedding. A yen. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. About 140 I don't even uh, care no more. Let's. Uh, what else we got, Taylor Gang? What else? Yeah. Is, what Give else us is some on the memes docket? of the week, yo. What Give else is a... on the docket? Yeah. Oh, Biden pickup truck. Did you see this, Schultz? No. What is this Biden pickup truck? Um. What is it? Make that bigger, Taylor. Paul. It's shocking, even for the. What does it say? Okay, this guy tweeted this too. That Mike Sing Mike Sington says shocking even for the depraved monster that he is. Trump has posted Trump has posted a video on True Social that depicts an image of President Biden tied up and bound in the back of a pickup truck. Do you have John Stewart speaking about this, Taylor? Yeah. Please pull up John Stewart speaking about this. I want you to hear this, Schultz. I want you to tell me what you think about what John Stewart said. <laughs> <laughs> we are a ridiculous society, man. Hog tie. I don't know no hog tie. I, I really, I think the scales are broken. The scales are broken. Everything does not weigh the same. Yeah. And we have to stop making inconsequential things seems so consequential. Now, is that fucked up for a former president to post? Yeah. But if you're a news outlet that shows people, that shows unarmed uh, police, law enforcement killing unarmed people, that shows images of war, to his, to, to John Stewart's point, that shows you 9-11 every year, shows people jumping, these poor souls jumping out of buildings. If that is okay to show on television, how come that's not? <laughs> <laughs> How do we know Biden doesn't enjoy that in his prime time? <laughs> we'll be in hog time. <laughs> like, I, I don't even understand. We can't even say that it's actually offensive yeah. just yet. We don't know what Biden is into. I get it because people are saying things like, what? you know, Trump He's has so the type stupid. of followers that... Uh, would try to do that? Do that type of violence. Try to do it. I dare you. But guess what? If they are ever, ever able to do that to President Biden, the Secret Service has totally, 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 totally failed. failed. Like, you know how many things have to go wrong Yo. in order for somebody to get a sitting president of the United States and hogtie him? I mean, that'd be crazy. It'd be insane. That'd be embarrassing. It'd be embarrassing. That'd be like, embarrassing. What are we talking about here? Yeah. But just the point, the John Stewart point, the fact that MSNBC and CNN acted like this was the worst image ever in the history of life, that they couldn't even show it? Yeah. What I are we doing, y'all? I don't think they should have showed it. Why? I feel like it's... I've, I, I have some trauma from that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can move on after seeing a president in that position right there. That was disgusting. But then they wonder why nobody trusts the media anymore. I don't even think they care. I think they're so far gone from being trusted. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to appease people's feelings. And there are plenty of people that watch that and they're like, oh, my feelings are met. And by the way, both sides do it. I mean, the Republicans did All it this weekend, too. All of them do it, with yeah. That, with that old transgender Easter thing. Which was such fucking horseshit. It's so—did you—you you saw what the whole history was of it? 
I mean, I just know that the the uh, the, the transgender day of visibility has been March thirty first for a while. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Biden's... And Easter changes every Sunday. Exactly. Every <laughs> so, year. Every year. Yeah, yeah. Because it's Sunday. on a Sunday. Every yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, how did how did somebody even put those two things together? So he declared it the day three years ago when it obviously wasn't the same day as fucking Easter. Yeah. But then it comes around now and it's the same day as Easter. Now, would he have done it within the same year? Of course not. Now he's tricky. He's going, "Uh uh-oh, what do we do? It's going to be on Easter. Fuck, they're going to think that I wanted it to be Easter Sunday. Should we move the day? If we do that, we piss off all the gay people and the liberals and the progressives. If we don't move it, then we have the right, you know, tearing us up. This is fucked up, yada, yada, yada. It's. But here's my issue with that is just like there are people that know that the issue is way more complicated than it presents. And is they, that a complicated issue? No, no, no. Meaning like they know what I just said. Okay, okay, okay. But they're purposely ignoring it and putting out headlines yes. like, Biden declares yes. Easter Sunday trans visibility yes. day. And when there's too much money to be made off that outrage, you continue to make the money. Mm, Jesus That's Christ, what it is. Man. That's what as simple as that. But there's no checks and balances. Nobody at Fox says, listen, man. Easter Sunday changes every year, y'all. It, like, like this is not. We know this isn't factual. Nobody at MSNBC or CNN goes, "Look, man, let's not act like we can't show this image." Even if you want to rant and rave about the image and talk about it was terrible for Trump to post, I understand that. But to act like that's the worst shit we've seen. If it bleeds, it leads. That ain't even bleeding. But the <laughs> people think it. Like the people are just waiting to gnaw on that. They're but waiting to chomp. There's on that. enough things bleeding. You're right, bro. You know it's saying? stupid. Like, it, we can find some real things that are bleeding. Trust me, I agree with you a thousand percent. It's the dumbest fucking waste of time ever. And it's just so. And when I see so much of it posted out there, after you know the truth and you see so much posted, you yeah. start to not trust anything. Nothing. Like any any headline that's interesting that I see. I saw one guy post this, and he was like, uh, uh, he posted a video or picture of the LSU team not being present for the national anthem, right? Mm hmm. And then goes, Iowa just beats LSU team that uh, uh, skipped out on the national anthem or something like that. Mm -hmm. When they skipped out, I think it was last year or two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it's not inaccurate to say that Iowa beat the team that skipped out on the national anthem. It just didn't happen this year. But it's it's presented as if it happened this year because that is blood. Mm -hmm. What you just said is why a sense of pragmatism sets in with all of these different situations and we all get numb to everything. Yep. Because if you make, if you have such outrage over stuff like the pickup truck or the transgender day of visibility falling on Easter this year, if you make that kind of noise about that, when something is really wrong, <laughs> when there's something that you really need to get people Nobody riled up about, we won't give a flying fuck. Fuck. We don't care now. We don't care. We're now. in the era of don't care. And That's right. quote unquote, they create it. The media create it. When you feed us enough bullshit, and, right. we're, and we're also guilty of it as well. Like private media or like uh, what independent media also puts out bullshit. It's just as biased. Yeah. Like it, everybody's biased. But we're in the age of don't care. The things that are crazy that people have said, we're desensitized to. Like insane things. We just came out of the age of if you say one thing that's kind of wrong, you're canceled forever. That's and right. now it feels like we are in the polar opposite of that, where it's say whatever the fuck you want, and 24 hours later, nobody even remembers. Because everybody, the, the, they call it flooding the zone with shit. Mm-hmm. Right, Chris? Well, that's the Republican term. Yeah. Republican term, but I love that term. I think it's a great term. Steve Bannon created it. What does it mean? What is, tell them what it means, Chris. I think it's just throwing so much dis- disinformation out there that right. it becomes impossible to... To tell what is true and what is false. Everything's... It's, it, the yeah. whole place is flooded with shit. Yep. All the zones are flooded with shit. Yep. I can't sift through all this shit to find what's real and what's not. So guess what I end up doing? Not looking at not, it. Not a goddamn not thing. Not caring about it. I don't it. even give a fuck. Have at it, y'all. <laughs> Isn't that it? No, but it's true. I find myself doing the same thing. Like I read the headline and I, and I, li- I think I texted the group. I was like, there's no way that this is real. Which like, one? The uh, the transgender day, like uh, on Easter. It, we're in an election cycle. There's no way that Biden's team, right? I'm not even saying Biden's making the decision. His team would purposely make transgender visibility day the same as Easter if it was up to them. I knew it wasn't real simply because I'm like, 
Easter changes every exactly. year. Exactly. But, <laughs> like, I knew that before. As soon as I saw the headline, I'm like, but Easter changes every year. But didn't they make it seem like he declared it this yes, year? Exactly. Yes. And if you don't know any better, you just see the headline and go at it. Mm-hmm. Boy, fuckers start leaving comments, start reposting this and that. Now, all of a sudden, the lie has traveled all the way around the world. Bro, you know what? Before I, the truth even put his shoes on. I, yeah, <laughs> I thought that, you know how, like, uh, Instagram went down on uh, uh, yesterday? Or, I didn't know that. It was, so it went down for a few hours. I like the other. I like the lie of that somebody the Diddy did. did it. Yeah, I that, mean that's a way better lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I thought that Instagram went down simply because April Fools creates so much misinformation because that's the game. Like just say something false to get people for April yeah, yeah, Fools. Yeah. So I thought it was meta. But what happens is two weeks later, when that meme is still out there, you don't know it was dropped on April first. So now there's this piece of information that's not true that's pushed out there from maybe like a source that you kind of believe. And now you forgot about the date. So I thought when in this Instagram went down, I was like, oh, this is Facebook choosing to control misinformation by just logging everybody off or Facebook and Instagram being down. Uh, during this time where a lot of misinformation would come out. I'd be feeling bad for the people who decide to do something on April 1st and forget it's April Fool's Day. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like, you might do some real important shit or make, like, a real important announcement. Everybody's like, I'll get the fuck out of here. April Fool's. I adopted two black kids. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Did you? (laughs) (laughs) But no, you you really might... He he really might have adopted those two black kids. That's the thing. But nobody gives a fuck. Nope, we gotta wait till April 2nd. That's right. So then they see you on April 3rd and they fucking call the police on you for trafficking. So they're like, why are you with these two little black kids for no goddamn reason. Well, like, and, and, and then Tyrese. And good old Tyrese. <laughs> good old Easter egg head Tyrese. Come on, Tyrese. Demands a, let me read this headline. Tyrese demands apology from Joe Biden after declaring Easter Sunday transgender day of visibility. Come on, Pick up bro. your Bible, Mr. President. Jesus don't do politics. Pick up a calendar, Tyrese. <laughs> okay? And realize that Easter... If you're a Christian, shouldn't you know Easter Sunday changes every... Yeah. Every year, <laughs> why does it change? Uh, it's something with the solars, the the sun, and the. But not even like it should just be on the day that it is. I'm not reading all of that. <laughs> and the funny part is, Tyrese ain't even gonna apologize. No, just move on. Just Everything move on. Is move on. Nobody now. gives a fuck because guess what, Tyrese, you're right to somebody. Even though you're wrong <laughs> in the bigger scheme of things, yeah. you're right to a lot of people. Yeah. So you might as well just be right to those people. Hundred percent. By the time they figure out you're wrong, it'll be next Easter. Don't the, even it, worry about exactly. it. Exactly. But shout out Easter though. Shout out Jesus. Christ is King. I don't know what Easter is anymore. What is Easter about? Say what? What is Easter about? You uh, know, the history of Easter was that people used to, uh, speaking of Japanese games, sexual games, <laughs> people used to play hide and go fuck. So they would paint their bodies a bunch of different colors, and then they would go hide. And like, if a man found a man, he would have to fuck the man. If a woman found a woman, they would have to fuck. That's where the whole concept of the painted Easter eggs and everything came from. You let him say these things, looking all it diesel like truth. that, and you don't it do shit? Truth. You let him say these things? That's yeah? why the Playboy Bunny, that's why the bunny is, is there, because the bunny represents sex and fertility. Yeah. Hold on, I have like heard the, something about that, wild. though. It's the truth. Yeah. Bunnies like the fuck and bunnies have mad kids. That's what they do. Bunnies represent, pull, look it up. Look up if bunnies represent sex and fertility, buff. Buff the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, it, right, so look it up. Look, y'all just made it. Look it up, young yeah. Diesel. Okay, no doubt. This young is not talking D. to me nice. Yo, you look like Meek Mill Security right now. Yes. Yeah. You look, Stop. Like, yo, you look like you just did a bid with Beanie Siegel. For real, for real. Keep it up. I can't wait till y'all see the surprise and y'all not going to have any. I didn't say nothing. Say what? No, I didn't say nothing. Buffy the Cheesesteak Slayer. (laughs) 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 Yo, that's crazy right there. Look up bunnies and sex. Bunnies and sex. sex. Bunnies symbolize sex. All right, maybe they do, but what about the rest of the shit you just yeah. said? It's got a, nothing to it's do with true. that. It's <laughs> true. I, I, I forgot what, what, who it was, but there was these group of people who used to paint their bodies, and they used to go play. They used to play hide and go fuck. And if you found the person, whoever you found, you fornicated with them. 
Bunnies were used as a fertility symbol by various religions, most likely starting was with this the Sumerian. Was this a game at Diddy's house? Or something? Ishtar. <laughs> what are you hold talking? on, hold on. Bunnies were used as a fertility symbol by various religions, most likely starting with the Sumerians and Ishtar, where Easter, where Easter gets its name. Also used for the ancient pagan holiday Ostarara and other various spring fest festivals. They were used as a fertility symbol since they reproduced prolifically. Look up the uh, Easter. Look up. Look up, put Easter, and put um, hide and go fuck. This is Charlotte, crazy. You really want to die on this one. You, <laughs> that, you sharing you your really childhood think God trauma cares about this? on the podcast. God knows this is some BS. Bunnies don't even lay eggs. <laughs> okay? But y'all got bunnies. Alex, I know you ain't just looking at me like it. You can't I, 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 I thought it did, too. I I we from like the a, city. We don't got bunnies here, bro. I thought bunnies it was like a chicken. don't lay eggs. Not they don't like a chicken. I thought they got like three or four. Bunnies eggs. do Mammals. not lay eggs. Man, come on. What's wrong man. with you, human? <laughs> Yo, I swear to God, I know. Y'all that. believe in him for real? Bunnies lay Wait, eggs. Wait, bunnies lay eggs or not? No. So then, why is it part of the holiday? Yeah. I don't know. No, first of all, once again, you think God cares about any of this? God is like, man, if y'all don't get out of here with that stupid shit, like y'all got bunnies laying eggs, <laughs> but wait, y'all why? painting Easter eggs. What does any of this have to do with me? If I'm Jesus, I'm like, what exactly. does any of this have to do with me? Hold on, bunnies for real? Don't look that up. No, I had one. They do not lay eggs. You had a bunny? I had a bunny before. What'd you do with it? It died. Really? What'd you do with the meat? <sighs> I buried him. I didn't eat him. Nah, he supposed to stew that. What happened? You squeezed him too hard? Yo. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm always down for a good mice and mid rap. No doubt. Holy shit. No doubt. No doubt. Yo, what did you bring here no that doubt. you think is so delicious that we're going to eat I know hours what it later? Is. I know what it is. Is it the pie? <gasps> is it your mama's pie? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really is it your mama's really sweet pie? <laughs> is it your mama's sweet pie? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all not gonna give none of us your mama's sweet pie. What a pie? What is that? I don't know. I, 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 Taylor Google this, and all that came up was porn. <laughs> Damn, Taylor. <laughs> Hide and go fuck porn videos. Well, I know what I'll be watching later on oh today. Oh, Let's pay some bills, Taylor Gang. Get it. Let's pay Get some it. bills, Taylor Gang. Let's pay some bills. Taylor looks like an Easter Bunny a little bit when he's taking <laughs> You look like a little... You really look, with your natural hair. Like, with your natural hair. I'm going to be not, honest with you. You, you look like you, you took do. your blue bunny ears and put them in the back. To make yep. you a nice little ponytail. Yep. You got the little D's on this like you don't be eating nothing but vegetables. <laughs> yes. so, you look like a little Cadbury Bunny, Taylor. You do. Is it cake? Is it cake? Yo. Is it cake, Taylor? I have it right here. So either y'all keep talking or y'all want it. Clearly y'all don't want it, so keep talking. But why don't I just come over there and take that shit from you? What the fuck Try you gonna it. do? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just joking. Make no more Diddy jokes. I'm just joking. <laughs> take, <laughs> take that. Take that. <laughs> all right. Okay. No, but for real, though, can I get it? What is it? That's her mama's pie. She told me she was sending it. No, she didn't. She told yes, me. she did. She didn't. Yes, though. she really did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> okay. Okay, mm. she did. She told me it was going to be in a nice little green bag. She no, said she, she made, didn't. She said she made you're extra so, for Easter. So she told shit. me she made extra for Easter because she cooked. And she said she made a few extra pies. It wasn't for you. I decided to make this decision, but clearly, y'all don't want any. Who was it for then? Is it already eaten? I took a piece. God, <laughs> I gotta go pee. I'm going to pee. Taylor. See, I be I be trying to be on your side, talking about how you in shape, and then here you go doing the fattest shit you can think of. No, first of all, again, she didn't cook it. She didn't cook it for you guys. So I'm like, oh, I will get the rest for you guys. But clearly, I gotta try this pie though. No. <laughs> Come on, let me just try. It. I want an apology. Let me do it. Th- for me? I said I'm it. I, I'm sorry. All y'all. I'm sorry. I want some pie. For what? I want your mama pie. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, Andrew. <laughs> Are you going to do the egg? Yes. <laughs> okay. Listen. Did you know 
that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA. I bet you didn't know that. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold, okay? But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. That is Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply, of course. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfer is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to the U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Guys, this podcast is also brought to you by Chime. Spring is in full bloom. Are your finances blooming too? With the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, it's easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. And if your credit scores grow, so could your opportunities for lower rates on loans, for a car or a home. Plus, the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card has benefits that you will absolutely love, like up to $200 in fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a credit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. And speaking of direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Get paid up to two days earlier with a qualifying direct deposit. With Chime Secured Credit Card, you can and start improving your credit scores right away. Get started today at chime.com slash idiots. That is chime.com slash idiots. Chime feels like progress. Now for some legal jargon. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bank Corp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash disclosures for details. Now let's get back to the show. Fucking Taylor tried to give us that Liberty Bell pie. Yo, Came come on. Cracking it already. Yo. Listen, <laughs> this shit is funny as fuck, man. What happened? Oh, I can't watch it. Hold on. Hold on, man. Hold on. I'm sitting here. We just had a conversation about Gerard Carmichael. Salute to my homegirl, Courtney, my young OG. This is Gerard Carmichael. Hi, Courtney. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to make a love connection. Very difficult not to be awkward on the... Like, just, it's just me and it's like... I'm not... But no, he says hi. Follow you on Twitter, Instagram, or something. Just accept his DMs, okay? <laughs> This must be when Gerard did Brilliant Idiots back in the day. My homegirl Courtney just sent me this at 5.11 p.m. What does that say, Shokes? I can't believe you tried to set me up with a gay man. <laughs> <laughs> this was eight years ago. We didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. She said all this controversy reminded me of this. She said it popped up in memories. This is like eight years old. I didn't know Gerard was gay at the time. I was just like, yo... One of my young homies from Columbia, South Carolina. One of my young homies from North Carolina and Toronto. I thought they'd be a good connection. I didn't know. I didn't know. Next time, I'll make sure to connect Gerard with Courtney, my homeboy, and not Courtney, my homegirl. What you got for church announcements, Shotzi? Um, yo, first of all, LA, thank you guys so much. Ooh. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, we added uh, our Houston. We're coming this weekend. Uh, also Dallas, we're coming out there. Then, uh, Charlotte, we added another show. Las Vegas, we added another show. When this comes out, might be the pre-sale for that second show in Vegas. Uh, theandrewstoles.com, pre-sale code is Andrew. Uh, go get those tickets immediately. Uh, Nashville and when is Austin. Vegas? Vegas is, uh, May 22nd. I gotta catch oh, one before no, the sorry, Garden. Sorry, May 25th. Vegas, May 25th. And the Garden is the single to Mayo weekend. Garden is May 3rd and 4th. I got to catch one before the garden. Where's one before the garden? I need one before the garden. Um, You want to go to Abu Dhabi? I'm thinking about Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. I'm thinking about Abu Dhabi. Atlanta. Let me see. Atlanta might be fun. Atlanta might be cool. Atlanta Atlanta might be fun. When is Atlanta? Uh, I'll tell you right now. Atlanta Um, might be fun. Atlanta's April 14th. 
Uh, Jacksonville, April 12th. Uh, da, 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 da. April 14th is a Saturday? <laughs> I want to catch one before the garden. The garden is going to be such a celebration. I know the garden's going to be crazy, but I want to see the show before the garden. I don't want to be, because I don't want to pay attention that much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to pay attention to the garden, but I know you got other special things planned for the garden. But that night, I want to be in a fly suit, you know what I'm saying, walking around with a bottle of champagne or something. Like, I want to enjoy, like, just the moment of you selling out the garden. I want to go see the material somewhere, somewhere else. else. You know yeah, what I mean? We'll, we'll drag you out somewhere. Come through. Come through. Come through to a fun one. Yeah, I mean, got... they're all fun, but, like, maybe we go out. When's Austin? Dinner. Oh, yeah. Austin would be fire, Is Austin too. April? Austin is in... No. May? No, no. It is April 19th. April 19th. That's what day? That's the weekend? That's a Saturday, I'm pretty Ooh, sure. That's to sound like a good date night. It's April 13th. Or Friday. It's a Friday, sorry. That sounds like a good date night. Yes, sir. That sounds like a good date night. It's on Friday. Atlanta is, I think, on a... I don't know the date of it. But Atlanta is April 14th. 14th. Atlanta's um, a beautiful theater, too. The Fox Theater. Oh, no. Nah, Atlanta's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, My church announcements are simple. Uh, April 9th, My Black Country will be out. Okay, in bookstores everywhere. Salute to Alice Randall. Come My on. Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future by Professor Alice Randall, man. Um, this book is doing so well in pre-orders. I know for a fact that Beyonce has a lot to do with that because anytime that they're having any, you know, larger conversations about, like, black people and country music, they always go talk to Alice Randall. If you've seen a lot of these op-eds that she's been writing in, like, Time Magazine and the New York Times and different places like that, then you know what I'm talking about. Alice Randall was the first woman who wrote a country song that went number one. Beyonce is the first black, first black woman, I'm sorry, Alice Randall is the first black woman who wrote a song, who wrote a country song that went number one. Beyonce is the first black woman who just has a number one song on the country charts, period. But Alice Randall actually is the first black woman who wrote a, a country, country song. song that went number one on the charts, man. So salute to Alice Randall. My Black Country is available everywhere you pre-order books now, but it will be in bookstores April 9th, everywhere you buy books. And my book, uh, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks will be out May 21st. Uh, I'm actually doing the audio book right now. I should be finished with the audio book by the time uh, this podcast comes out. So make sure you go pre-order that right now. I'll be announcing my book tour soon. And uh, April 27th, the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening in Atlanta, Georgia at Pullman Yards. Same place it went down last year. Wallow and Gilly will be on that podcast stage. Jess Hilarious will be on that podcast stage doing her podcast, Carefully Reckless. Um, the Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex will be on that stage. They're going to have a special guest too. Dre and Lex, y'all don't even know that yet. <laughs> okay? But... I'm about to tell y'all something in a minute. Horrible Decisions. They're going to be on that podcast stage. Debbie Brown with Deeply Well, she's going to be on that podcast stage. Uh, the Baller Alert Show is on that podcast stage. And Will Lucas, Black Tech Green Money is on that podcast stage. We got a business and podcasting panel. John O'Brien is on that. Damon John from Shark Tank is on that. Uh, Carrie Champion is on one of our podcast panels. We have your picture podcast activation. That'll be there again this year. So come see us, man. Event Bright to get your tickets or go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to get your tickets. I'm sorry the VIP is already sold out, but there's still general admission tickets left. So go get those. Now let's get back to the show. Um, did you watch any of the women's college basketball games, Schultz? Uh, nope. I told you three years ago. Maybe it was last year. I think it was last year. I told you last year during the Final Four that women's college basketball is absolutely, positively one of the best things going today. Now you called it. I want to go on the record right now and say that I believe women's college basketball is more exciting than the NBA. In what way? In the fact that the NBA is great. Okay. It's the best of the best. The world's greatest basketball players play in the NBA. But there's no excitement because mm. they're all just good. There's not a lot of defense in the league anymore, right? So you be having these astronomical scores, 150 points, right? 
um, a lot of three-point shooting, which is great, but it would be even better if you were getting these shots off challenged. Mm. Uh, I don't think there's any real storylines in the NBA right now. There's no real rivalries in the NBA right now. And the NBA is in this weird transition period where there should be a new face of the league, but it's not yet. Hmm. Like LeBron James is LeBron James. It's Aunt Steph Edwards. Curry is there, but the guys like Ant Edwards are still on the rise. I feel like it's Aunt Edwards. That Ja could own the league right now, but you know. Yeah, it's Ant Edwards, bro. He can't put the guns down. You think Ant is the face of the league, though? I think he will be. Will be. And that I think that's what makes it weird in the NBA. He's remarkable. Have you seen him play? Oh, like he's, he's phenomenal. Unbelievable. But I think that's what makes it strange. Like with college basketball, right? It's no doubt who the faces of college basketball are. Hmm. Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese. Flage. Flage's on the rise. She's a sophomore, but she's one, right. she's there. But those two, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, you got Paige Buckets from UConn. Yep. You know what I mean? You got Juju Watkins, the freshman at USC. You know, you got what the South Carolina Gamecocks are doing just as a as a team, just the dynasty that, that that Don Staley is building. So you just have a lot more different personalities in the in women's college basketball. You got a lot of great rivalries. Like I'm looking forward to seeing Iowa and UConn play in the Final Four this weekend because you got Caitlin Clark versus Paige Buckets. You know what I'm saying? South Carolina uh, Gamecocks and North Carolina State you know, are playing this weekend. That's South Carolina, North Carolina, plus South Carolina still undefeated. Hmm. You know, I just, women's college basketball is just way more exciting. And I think, this is just my take on it, I think the tournament aspect of it, where you're one and done, adds a different level of urgency. Yeah, it's exciting. You know? For sure, it's exciting. Adds a different level of urgency. And I think the right, that's the word, exciting. Yeah. It's just more exciting. I mean, I've never seen people speak about the uh, women's women's basketball the way that they are right now. Bro, you got to watch it. I think I know more female players in the NCAA than I do male. I'm the same way. Of course, I don't know any in the NCAA. Because they stick around yeah. for four years. Exactly. So you guys. That's the other thing under. that what you just said, Chris, is another thing. The fact that these women stick around for the whole four years, they get to develop into these stars. You know what I'm saying? They get Their games get to develop. So we get to watch Caitlin Clark in her purest form as a senior. Mm. Last night she had 41 points, 12 assists, and seven rebounds. Nine fucking three-pointers, bro. Shooting from the logo. <laughs> like, oh... On some Steph Curry that, shit. That was a very watchable game, I would describe it. Like, <clears throat> as an experience, it was as good as a men's game. I went to the Sweet 16 last week. I went uh, I went uh, to watch the Gamecocks play Indiana in Albany last Friday. Because, you know, my, my wife went to, you know, the Gamecocks. And, I, you know, she was a cheerleader for the Gamecocks. So I, um, I support the she Gamecocks. Was athletics. Yeah. She was a cheerleader for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's like I, I support the Gamecocks athletics and everything that they do, man. Everything that they do. You see, I'm sitting here rocking my uh, so much. Malaysia Fawali shirt. Who's that? Malaysia Fawali. She is a freshman at the University of South Carolina. Baller. <clears throat> Future star. Don Staley says she's a generational talent. Uh, we watched some of her highlights before. We watched them here on the podcast. Oh, she's, she's she, nice. She, she like, plays like Kyrie. Yeah, yeah. Can can you get give her an uh, nil sponsorship? We should sponsor her. Um, I've thought about some things. I mean, that'd be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought about. It. I, I just want. I, I want her to. I want to. I want to be able to present her the right thing. But I do have an idea for her though. Which is? I don't want to say on the pod. Why not? But I do have. I do have something. I think. Um, I mean, what if the we're, Breakfast we're, we're Club not, sponsors them? That'd be awesome. No, nah, I think it's something else. I think it's something else that can be done. All right. Something a little, a little stronger. Well, but, though, no, salute to Malaysia for Wiley. Salute to her family. Met her family last week uh, when I went to the game, when I went to go watch uh, South Carolina play Indiana. So, salute to the women uh, college ball players, man. Y'all are the most exciting thing in basketball today. And it's not Facts. even close. Facts. It's not even close. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Oh, th th this is the... Okay. This is the only. This is my only gripe with college basketball. What? I it? only LSU's, have one. What is it? Which one you want to play first? This one. This is two different points 
right? This is Angel Reese delivering her emotional post-game interview following loss to Iowa. Flo J. Johnson comes to her defense. My only problem with the WN, not the WNBA, with women's college basketball is they cry after losses. Yeah, they're the victim. I, but they all do. The Ju Juju cried last night when she lost. Whenever the women lose, they cry. So it makes me wonder something. What's up? Do men really want to cry after they lose, but they don't? We do cry after yeah, we lose they, sometimes. What, what, what man have you seen cry after You haven't seen him, like, in the Super Bowl on the ground crying like a little bitch? No, <laughs> but I'm talking about guys. LeBron. What? <laughs> she said only LeBron. What'd you say? LeBron that be crying. Whoa. LeBron cry? I've never seen LeBron cry. I've never seen LeBron cry over a loss. You look like he LeBron's leg sleeve. No, I'm talking about actual tears. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what? <laughs> so she tells she a little bit. Give me a jab step. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about actual tears. I'm not talking about like being upset. I'm talking about like actual tears. That's the only thing I don't like. It's just like, yo, it's a loss. Now, I understand seniors. Yeah. And, you know, you're not going to play again. So I understand being overwhelmed with emotion. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, you, you, you lost. Is Angel a senior? Angel can come back for another year if she wants to. A she's fifth a fifth year? Or? She's a junior. But because I think, I think because of COVID, she's eligible for another year. Well, if she's a junior, then she has another year no matter what. I don't know. They said it during the game. I don't know what the reason, but she. I don't know she what the reason choice. is yet, but I, I, I think she's listed as a junior. I mean, but she 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 has another year of eligibility, but I don't think it's because. Seems like a no brainer she's a to senior. go back. I would come back, right? You make just you probably make more. Well, I, I don't know if you could make more money. Somebody was having that. Me and my cousin Tone was having that conversation about how yeah. it's probably hard to, you know, uh, coach these kids that are making millions of dollars, and I don't think so. Because if I was a coach, I would simply tell him this, and I would bring in, I would bring in people in the NBA. Well, you can't really do it in the WNBA because there's nothing to compare it to. But in like the NBA, I would bring in these people who are making these two hundred, three hundred million dollar contracts, mm -hmm. and I would say to these people like, "Look, I know you think you're making some money now in college because you made three million dollars this year, or you made four million dollars this year, but this is the reason you need to stay focused because you can go to the NBA and make fucking two hundred million, three hundred million dollars. Mm. So don't think you're really doing some shit right now. What do you tell the WNBA players about how much they can make? <sighs> you don't. You stay. <laughs> stay, yo, stay. You should stay. You call yeah. the WNBA, they give you a pair of black Air Force Ones and a tuna sandwich. So, <laughs> so, so you might as well stay your ass in the fucking yeah. NCAA. If, I, if I'm Andrew Reese, I'm staying another year, man. Taylor? Play the, play the clip, Taylor. Wow. <laughs> because there's a lesson to be learned in this, too. You know, you know listen, I'm let me like, set it up. You know, Angel Reese takes a lot of shit. She does take a lot of shit. She takes a lot of shit. Social media is always coming at her. People are always coming at her. Mm -hmm. You know, but Angel talks a lot of shit too. She but does. she backs it up for the most part. But this is what she said at the end. Let's play this. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things. And I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down. And like not be there for them so I just want to always just know like I'm still a human like all this has happened since I won the national championship and I said the other day I haven't had peace since then and it sucks and but I still wouldn't change I wouldn't change anything and I would still sit here and say like I'm unapologetically me I'm gonna always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that and Hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. I just try to stand strong. What did like, Flaw Janae say? Let's play with Flaw Janae say. I like how Flaw Janae yeah. held it down for her Everybody teammate. Everybody can have their pen on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese, and the person I see every day is a strong person, is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wears is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's gonna make you believe in yourself. The, the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog, playing next to a dog every day. And, you know, just to see how the media ridicule her. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck problems, up, but, Andrew like, Schultz. my sister right here. And I'm so proud of her. Like <laughs> the media, y'all, how they like to twist and call it a villain and all of that. Y'all don't know Angel, bro. And 
I'm just happy that <laughs> I What does she sound like? Like, like little Bow Wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> she a better player. She, she does, better right? Player. Like Kai Sinai. <laughs> 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 Kai? <laughs> like Kai? <laughs> 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 she said Flaugenay sound like Kai Sinai. That's funny as shit. Shout out to Flaugenay. That's uh, Camouflage's daughter, man. Rest in peace to Camouflage, man. Yo, shout out to Flaugenay, um, man. This is the thing. And shout out to Angel. Salute to Angel. It is true. It, 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 she does go through a lot of scrutiny, especially for someone her age to go through that. And, you know, she plays a game passionately, sure. But, like, getting criticized at that age, where you have no idea who you even are yet, is... It's what type of criticism, though. But here's, here's the thing I would tell Angel. Here's the thing I would tell Flaugenet. Here's the thing I would tell you, Andrew Schultz. I would tell anybody that is a public person. Hmm. People are going to criticize you. That is true. This and, is and, and especially if they have something that they can criticize, meaning like you're Angel Reese. You are a dog, like Flaugene said. You go out there, you average double doubles every game. You won the ring last year. Motherfuckers going to talk shit. They don't want you to be in that position. How dare you have that kind of confidence? Andrew, how dare you sell out the forum? And, 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 and go up on stage and make the kind of jokes you be making. How dare you? Yep. How dare you, Charlemagne, have an opinion about any fucking body? Yep. How dare, who are you? Like, there's going to always be people the cost for who are... It's the cost of being successful. Yep. But I will say this. It's the type of criticism. Angel says something very important here. She don't need to... She don't deserve death threats. Of course not. She don't deserve motherfuckers doing fake AI images of her naked and all types of not shit. Like all. that's the type of shit that you should not have to wake up to. So when people say things like, oh man, you know, everybody's gonna get criticized, that is true. But what level of criticism? There's levels to the criticism. It's one thing to be like, man, I hope you lose. Man, you suck as a basketball player. Mm. It's another to be like, I want you to die. Yeah. I hope somebody fucking kill you. And it's just, it's, and she's a girl that I imagine is on social media a lot because that's just what her and her friends do. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's got to see all these different things. She's and, 21. Yeah, it's going to, she don't listen, know the world without social media. Exactly. It's going to make her tougher, but it, maybe. It, yeah, or, or it could break her. I, right. I, I don't think it will break her, but it is, there is, I imagine, a weight for someone at that age. We're fucking old guys. We deal with it, and there are even times where we deal with it where it's like annoying, it's stressful, it's frustrating. It's I can't annoying. imagine, yeah. But I can't imagine being 19 years old and you start going through this. So yeah, because yeah. they, like, they're at the point where like um, they they still address it. Yeah. Like I saw when uh when when uh, Angel's alleged nudes went out, she addressed it. I wouldn't even have known about it if she hadn't said anything about it. You know what I mean? But the fact that she even had to address right. This isn't me. This is AI, blah, 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 this and that. You will get to the point where you stop addressing that shit, Angel, because you will realize all these motherfuckers is insane. And they want to fuck with your head. These motherfuckers is waking up miserable, yep. miserable, and they want to get in your head. So when they see you get online and reply to them yep. and acknowledge fake bullshit that they put out, yep. it's going to give them freedom to continue to do it because they think that they're affecting you. Yeah. So I would recommend that all of them get to the point where they don't even give that shit no energy. Hmm. None whatsoever. ever. Yeah. Because it ain't going to hurt you in no way, shape, or form. Yep. Yeah. Takes a, it takes a while to get there. It takes a while to get there. And also, they're, constant, they're constantly asked about it. So like after every game when they have a press conference, they can't control the questions that they're asked. Shit on the reporter. Be like, what the uh, fuck they got to do with basketball? That's good. What the fuck they got to do with basketball? But there's a perfect example. Like, I didn't even think that that's a way to answer it. They might not also think that. You've been in this business for so long that you probably went through these things or seen people do or you just have great instincts. But it's like having somebody coach them on that part of life, too. It's not yeah. just basketball. It's just like, hey, if someone asks you a question about your fucking personal life or something— you do not have to answer shit. You were here as a basketball. basketball player. Exactly. The second you start getting paid for your personal life, answer questions about that. Hmm. But you're not getting paid for that. Yeah, by the way, you're never getting paid for that. Low key, if they don't pay the players, you shouldn't have to go to a press conference. Ooh. Like, why am I... Because they're paying the school. Yeah, the scholarship. But a scholarship is scholarship. not payment. I mean, it is, technically. Mm -hmm. I, it is. You're getting a free ride through school. It's, that's payment. I don't yeah, know. But it's I, not income. It's not income. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I'm getting paid. I guess they, they go, well, this is part of your responsibility as a player on the team. You have to show up to practice. You have yeah. to press. But for me, I'm like, hold up, a press conference, 
your ESPN or whatever is selling advertising on these things. Like, I'm paid to play basketball. I'm not paid to do this shit for ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good answer. I guess that's the biggest. You know what you just said, Schultz, is true. And I guess that's the biggest thing I would say to all of these athletes or just people in general. Like, your personal life is your personal life. Mm. Even if you choose to share your personal shit over social media, yeah, you are giving people the license to be able to comment on it. Mm -hmm. But it's still your personal life. You can share it when you want to. You can reel it in when you want to. That is true. You can talk about it when you want to. You cannot talk about it when you want to. So if these motherfuckers are asking you questions about your personal life on that motherfucking stage, man, you know what every team needs? They need, they need a professional suck my dick representative. So you need a person on the stage that's like a PR, but their job is to strictly say suck my dick that's when you fire. get asked a question that you don't want to motherfucking be asked that don't got nothing to do with that's what we're doing. Fire. If I'm here to talk about basketball and you ask me some other shit, suck how do you dick. feel about these uh, alleged nudes of yours yeah. leaking? I got this one. Suck my dick. That's it. That's all you got to say. Suck my that's dick. That's it. Suck my dick. That's it. Eventually, suck my fucking dick. Eventually, these, public, these, these press dick. people will get tired of asking. Well, can I offer a contrarian? Yo, yo. You? Suck, suck my, suck my <laughs> dick, yo. <laughs> suck my dick. Never mind. <laughs> See how good <laughs> it is? That shit works. That shit works. That shit works. Taylor. Don Staley, add that to the repertoire. And y'all the cops, too? Yo, we really... <laughs> my cops. Yo. We really need. We really need. Suck my dick. You know, <laughs> we need to put a picture. Dick. We need to put a picture of Taylor's outfit so that people know what we're talking about. <laughs> they, they do. We need to put that up. You look diesel as fuck, Taylor. I, <laughs> so I don't know I'm why y'all keep talking. Nah, this Yo, shit is I don't know why y'all keep talking. Then this shit is. I don't know why y'all keep talking. Then what is your contrarian viewpoint, Chris? This is a podcast. We'll take it. Yeah, it's a little bit of like a pet peeve for me, just in the fact that. Look, there's no inherent value in playing basketball, right? I, as, as someone who's played thousands and thousands of hours and never gotten paid a cent. What? <laughs> there's nothing that, you know. Oh, time out. A five, six Jewish man. A five, six Jewish Asian man. Six that foot. There's no value six foot. in playing basketball because he played for hours and hours and Not didn't make happen. a dime. Fuck all the billionaires <laughs> and the hundred millionaires that exist because of basketball. Yeah, Chris. That's Fuck the billion up. dollar industry that basketball The value is. <laughs> is in the press's interest. The value is in the people's interest in these people's personal lives, for better or for worse. The value is this entire ecosystem around American sports that's I been disagree, created. I disagree, Chris. Because so. you what can else say that is about there? everything. We didn't know nothing you, about these guys in the 80s. Yeah, the and, the league, and the NBA was about to go out of business. It wasn't until David Stern started No, until the otherworldly talent named Michael Jordan came. But they you mark would give the credit to the Jewish guy. Of course. And Magic <laughs> and Bird changed the complexion of the because game. Because they started investing in these players' personalities in their lives. There was none of that with those. I think that first. there is a component with getting in touch with the personality. Obviously, that was very the effective. The storyline. The storyline with boxing. For Ma example, yeah. like the, remember the, what was the shit on HBO? Uh, oh, I think about, uh, the behind 24 the 24-7. 24-7, yeah. Right. And it got us invested in fighters. I'm sure that also happened with basketball players and we're more invested. And definitely the league right now is more player than it is team. But it's not completely that. Like people still, most people that are fans of like football teams don't know more than five players on a football team. Casual fans. But they like the team, and they like the camaraderie of being a football fan. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah, but you also don't hear football players complaining about the media because I think they realize what they have is such a loose kind of connection to this yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. The NBA true. players are so empowered that now they feel like they don't owe anything. And I'm like, I this see. shit has only skyrocketed because people started caring about who you the are. The personal stories, the human is yeah. they humanize Shaq. You're not wrong. I mean, with the Magic they and Bird, I think it was the storyline. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I think Magic and Bird with the storyline and them coming out of college, having a rivalry, I think that helped oh, a lot. Oh, 100%. Right. Michael Before Joy that, these guys were kind of, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure there were a couple of ads here and there for players, local ads. There was never the sense of the media investing in them as personalities until the 80s, and then it just took off. And that's when the the salary skyrockets. I'm like, you guys are messing with an ecosystem. Don't fuck with the thing that makes you the money. Hey. I, I hear, I, well, I, I, I get me, that. Well, let me ask you the truth, but isn't it a thing with the star power too, though? Because there was Magic, and then there was Bird. Who were the other stars in the league at that time? Like bona fide stars, Dr. J? No, well, Dr. J was Kareem, who was famously not a personable character, mm -hmm. who the media hated, and you know people didn't kind of feel a connection with. 
<laughs> what happened? Jesus what Christ. Happened? Fought on Kareem's legacy, bro. That's <laughs> I fought on Kareem's legacy. I, I think it's the star power. I think Come it's on. the star power of how they do on the court. There are great players who never got the same level of recognition be in the 80s and the 70s for sure. Like who? Bob McAdoo, uh, Cowan, Havelcheck. These guys were the superstars of the NBA. You have no real sense of who they were compared to the players who came 10 years later. They had no hold. No what? Hoes. I'm sure yeah, they, they didn't did. have hoes. They didn't I'm have sure no hoes. They, they were getting no hoes back in the day. That's what it boiled down to. Yeah, how many hoes you got? It really is about who the hoes want, Chris. That is true. Who do, who do, who do the women gravitate towards? Magic was beautiful. Magic had hoes. You know Bird wasn't. <laughs> but, but Bird but, didn't have no hoes. But who was the guy who fucked 15,000 women or whatever? Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain yeah, had yeah, hoes. Yeah, yeah. Knocking Will, he them was down. a star. Knocking he was them star. down. Listen, I mean, Bird didn't have the women that we know of, but Bird was so connected to Magic, and Magic's wave was so strong mm. that Bird was just a surfer on it. <laughs> and he was in yeah. Boston. You take the greatest white player and Bird put had, him in Bird, the Boston. whitest city in Bird America. Bird had his own wave. He wasn't L'chaim. surfing. Yeah. L'chaim. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, but Bird had bitches, though. I'm sure. 100%. 100%. Taylor. Damn. What? What's Damn. up, yo? Oh, my God. Yo, shout out to Future, okay? Future has another number one album. Ooh! Uh, that is nine number ones for him. If I'm not mistaken, that makes him the number five or number six rapper with the most number ones of all time. Am I making this up? I'm not making this up, right? I mean, life is good. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Last week, Alex said Future ain't shit compared to Drake. What? That was crazy, What did Al. you say? What? That's crazy. Al, that was crazy when That's you said crazy. that. What did you say? Uh, you mean and, when I said Drake is number one compared to Kendrick? And That's Future got five on the Billboard Hot 100 this week. Five of the top ten is Future Records. Uh, like that with Future, Metro Boomin' and Kendrick Lamar is the number one single in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, the highest selling single rap single this year or maybe the highest selling single this year all i know is future got nine number ones only people that got more number ones than future is jay-z drake kanye west and eminem Mm. wow he got more he got nine number ones eminem got 10 kanye got 11 drake got 13 jay-z got 14 future is one of them y'all yo what y'all keep talking about a big three there's a fantastic four Ooh. And if you really want to be tech, if you really want to get a little spicy, Future could be in the big three. Mm. You mean so it's Drake, Future, J. Cole? I would have Drake, <laughs> Future, Kendrick. Nah, I'd say. I would have Drake, Future, Kendrick, personally. Mm. But 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 you know, that, you, you the only reason, you the only reason that, I wouldn't yeah. put Future over Cole, because statistically, statistically, if you're talking about like numbers and all of that, future's over Cole. But lyrically, if you're talking about big three, you gotta have Cole in the big mm-hmm. thing. If you're talking about lyrics. But Future's number four. It's a fantastic four, yo. I Stop agree. saying big three. That's been a fantastic four for the past decade plus. How about this? Future's had more influence on the sound of music. Not even close. I... Yeah, absolutely right. I think, o- I think over Kendrick and J. Cole... You're not even r- wrong at all. Over Drake! Now, I, the only reason I push back on Drake is because Drake has played in so many different genres and because of that i think he's really helped popularize genres that were gaining steam so i think that he's been instrumental in that future is his own thing that has influenced other people does that make sense yes for better or worse I can find a million future clones all around the world yes i don't think there's any rapper that has influenced Culture, I agree, and music, I agree. More than future over the last it's, decade, it's I, profound. I, I think it's the. Uh, I think what you said just with now his the, style. I'm saying with his style. But see, I think what you said just now about future is what I would say about Drake. I think Drake is an individual. Okay, as an individual, has inspired a lot of people. Right, just inspired. I don't know if there's influence though. I think future has influence. People want to be future. Mm. People want to sound like future. Drake's style is so unique that it's hard to sound like Drake. I 
You know what I'm saying? I, I agree with you 100%. What I was trying to say is Drake will do a Afrobeat song. He'll do a, what is the, the London rap thing called? Mm. You're right, but those people Grind. need Drake to do that. I get, like I, designer didn't need Future to take Future's 100%. I'm just energy. saying the way that Drake is influential in music is he can kind of uplift other genres in the West that maybe aren't as popular here just yet. Yeah. The way that Future is influential is his style of doing rap yes. becomes other people's style. That's but right. both of them are, That's right. I think, really influential. I think, yeah, I, I like you including him in that. I, fantastic. It's kind of crazy that we don't. It's wild to me that we don't. It's not a big three. It is a fantastic four. And future is in that, and you can you can future is really one of the, he, you can put him you, he might be two or three he might can be, even be number one on some people's list. I think he's ob objectively. I think Jay Cole has this. He's unbelievable at rapping. Anytime he does a feature, you're like, holy shit, is this the best rapper alive? But his core fan base doesn't reach out to as many different places as futures does. I agree. Does that make sense? I like, agree. Future. I agree. Everybody has a future song that they listen to regularly. That's right. I don't know if we're all regularly listening to a J. Cole song. He has, yeah, he, J. Cole has a super core fan base. Yeah. He does. No, no. I'm saying his fan base loves yeah. every single oh, thing he does. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't never put on J. Cole in the gym. What? I put on that London song. You've never worked with, out with uh, J. Cole. Yeah, I should have yeah, said that. What song by J. Cole did you work out to? His last album was fi all fire. No, he's shit. fire. He's nice. What I'm saying is the casual American, white, black, doesn't matter. The casual, not the super fan of J. Cole. The casual American, I don't know how much J. Cole is in his rotation. 100%. Drake is in the rotation. 100% yes. a future songs okay. in there. Absolutely. But I don't like know that. if a J. Cole or even a Kendrick is in the rotation. Hmm. You also um, forget, I don't know how much y'all follow like the people under J. Cole. He has a lot of fire like artists under him. Yo, he's, no, no, he does, he does, he does. He's That's nice. He does. The people he fucks with are nice. Ari Lennox. J.I.D. J.I.D. Irv Gang. Nah, I fuck with them. Smino, yeah, I do. I really fuck with them. Uh, we got any more bills? Do we can do some Asking Idiots? All right, let's stop and pay some bills before we do some asking idiots, man. Uh, Squarespace, thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything. Your products, content you create, and even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case then customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device. Use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords, our most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain let's get into some asking idiots i gotta put some respect on also, kanye bro kanye yep. be aware of that what kanye do jesus yeah. he birthed all that but he keep ain't going future oh that, you talking yeah. about the post that he put up yeah. kanye, kanye put ain't up birthed a, no future kanye put up a post saying that he could basically dominate all of them can you like, pull up the post of the asking idiots <laughs> asking idiots QW331A says, Schultz, what was the mental shift that took place that led most to your recent success? Man, well, I don't... I think it's just like a lot of planting seeds and a lot of working and, and working with people that are really talented and, uh, and, you know, them just putting out great videos and great content and editing great stuff and... Uh, so yeah, I think it goes back even to when Alex and I were just putting out stuff and, uh, and then finally catching on and gaining momentum and steam and obviously Charlemagne sharing his platform and fan base with me. No, I disagree with everything you just said. Well, you could disagree all you want, but it is the truth of the matter. Rogan sharing his platform with me. Like I disagree with all of it. Charlemagne and Rogan, I think are, are crucial. And then putting out enough work where, when those platforms were shared, there was something for those people to enjoy. But Nobody when, put Andrew Schultz on. Andrew Schultz put himself nah, on. No, nah, no, nah. Nope. And I'm going to tell you why that is the case. Because there's, like, 
We started this podcast 11 years ago. Andrew has been a stand-up comic that has been, you know, uh, focusing on his craft of stand-up throughout that whole time. I think the mental shift when Andrew said, you know what, I'm not going to be like all these other comedians who cuff their material. I'm not going to be like all these other comedians yeah, who, sure. you know, are, are, are afraid to share their out material because they can't come up with new hours and new shit all the time. I think you starting to take your stand-up clips posting them online, posting them on YouTube. I think that evolved into the turn the camera, turn the yeah. camera shit. Yeah. And I think that the Rogans and everybody else, salute to Joe Rogan though, that's what that's when they notice you. Like it's like it's like it's like that old uh that that what's that 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 quote? I don't know if it's a quote, but they say if you if they see if you see somebody on the side of the road oh, and yeah. their car's broken down, you'll just drive by them. But if you, you see, see them push pushing them the car, it, yeah. you'll get out and assist them. So sure. You taking that mental shift to start putting out your content, you know, I think that is what made people start to take notice. By the way, that could have been a risk. You could have started putting out all that content and don't nobody give a fuck. Yep. Trust me. You know how many comedians I see every day trying to follow that model right now? Yeah, and yeah, nobody yeah. gives a flying <laughs> yeah, fuck? Yeah. But don't you stop. You keep on keep trying, pushing. buddy. You keep pushing. No, seriously. Yeah. Because it's just like it's like lightning in a bottle. Yep. It it hit for you. So you know, for for everybody that's, you know, coming around now, it's just like, yo, you really built this from the ground, ground up. With a lot of help from really fucking talented people like you and Rogan. Well, no. I, but, but yes, you need to build it. You need to build it 100%. I agree with that. And you, it's not just being around guys like you, but it's it's also putting in the work and making the work great and working really hard at it. But I think, like you said, once you do that, other people start to take notice and they yeah. want to help promote you and they want to help put you on because they recognize the work. So I agree with podcasting you. Podcasting is not stand-up. Right. This like, is that, like that's a whole different lane. We do the Brilliant Idiots podcast. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Rogan does a podcast, but Rogan is also a stand-up comic, so he recognizes other stand-up comics. Yeah. I think the podcast helps, you know, grow your profile and grow your brand. But I remember when people didn't even know you was a comic. They had no clue. I, this motherfucker, I can show you a text right now, motherfucker hitting me, sending me a clip where you want to text. I didn't know Andrew was a comic. Yeah, I know. What the fuck you mean? Yeah, it's crazy. Andrew yeah. been doing stand-up for 12 years. Longer. I think like fucking 17 or something That's like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, yeah, so I, I, personally, I think the mental shift was when you just started, when you stopped cuffing your material, which yeah. I think has changed the game of stand-up in so many ways because stand other stand-up comics don't cuff their material now. Yeah. And I think you have to have confidence in yourself to go out there and make some funny shit. Yeah. Constantly. I would, yeah. This yeah. is comedy. We got to keep pushing. People that have been doing the same set it's over. Those for days years, are done. that is disgusting to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even joking, yo. You've been doing the same set for 15 years, the same joke? Yeah. Like, and you think that I don't remember when, you know, you used to talk about it being a payphone, yeah. but now, <laughs> now it's not a cell phone. Like, yo, what are we doing? <laughs> like, yo, you should be able to come up with funny, witty shit every day. If you're, a, if you say your job is to be a comedian, yeah, a yeah. stand-up comic, if these people on Twitter are coming up with witty shit every day, if these people on these podcasts are coming up with witty shit every week and every day, you can't. You gotta but push. But you supposed to be the pro. You gotta push. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. Um... Uh, MV, can King Hezzy beat Caitlin Clark one versus one? What would be the score? Yes. <laughs> nah, bro. You ain't never see Caitlin Clark, bro. You have not watched enough Caitlin Clark, bro. She's six feet tall. She's really good. Chris, you watched Caitlin last night. Well, she's in better shape, first of all, right? Like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from someone out of shape. I'm so at my I'm peak not. physical fitness. Right? <laughs> no, I don't, know. I don't know. Listen, I'm gonna win. It's gonna be. I'm gonna have to be a dog, right? But <laughs> I'm gonna win. But when I'm a, I'm a dog. I'm gonna have to be a dog. It's gonna be ugly. You would have to rough her up. I'd have. All to. jokes aside, you cannot play her like she's a girl. I, I'm not playing her like no, I'm no, going no, no. at her chest. You got to. You got to With play all her like she's a man. You got to play her like she's trans. Like, yes. you got to go. Like, you got to... I'm serious, man. You cannot play with Caitlyn Clark. I agree. Clark, I'm not playing with Caitlyn Clark. You can't. Like, I'm you're going to have to rough her Could up. you beat her if you weren't allowed to back her down? If everything had to be off the dribble? Now we not... First of all, yes, but like... Well... It's bullshit. I don't know. No, I could. You'll never get the ball. How you if you figure? Give, if you give her the ball first... 
You're not getting the she's ball. She's not going back. to the basket on me. That's not, she's, impossible. She's so fast. She's so crazy off the dribble. Stop. She's going to blow by you. You're Listen, 40 years old and you're a dad, respect, bro. This is, all, this is all due respect. 40 years old and you're a dad. Yeah, but I, I can foul. You're a dog, but you're an old dog. I'm an old dog. <laughs> you're an old and dog. You know what? Old dogs don't need new tricks. All right. Old dogs got one hezzy. And that's all it takes. And no. and she, listen, I take out NBA players with it. You think I can't take out an NCAA player with you it? You took out one <laughs> wounded dog. <laughs> ten, ten years. Who gave you five bones. Six bones. Six, Six bones. bones. But he decided those rules. If he didn't decide that's those true. rules, I would have taken them seven points. Easy, light work. <laughs> My point is, Caitlin can get this work, too, with all due respect. No WNBA player, no female basketball player has ever challenged me, and I've challenged every single one of them. So whenever they're ready, I'm here. If you ever do a show in Columbia, South Carolina, here I'm we go with this. Up. I do a show everywhere. You I'm throwing that shit. If she to lay that up, I'm Wiley. throwing that shit. Okay. I'm th that shit's getting thrown. <laughs> All of these shits are getting thrown. Look at that. Oh, why, why, where's, what is that defense? Listen, you versus thrown. Malaysia for Wiley, yo. If you ever come to Columbia, South Carolina, yeah. you versus Malaysia for Wiley one on one, Colonial Life Arena. Okay, if Asia Wilson's in town, might even call up Asia Wilson. Asia backing you down. I'm throwing it. <laughs> I'm throwing her shit. I'm throwing all their shit, and it's not even a question. Let's do this one last question, <laughs> man. Get it. Classic Grant. This is a great way to end the podcast. How do you think? How do you guys think the world would end? Natural disasters. I don't know if he's asking us which natural disaster would end it or how do we think things are going to end, period. I mean, based off today, I think that Taylor balls Can't up her it. fist and slams on the ground and the earth like, splits in half. Like fucking that, good. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. It's about to happen now. So <laughs> <you know. laughs> I don't think the world's ever going to end. Worlds don't end. Human civilizations do. World, there's plenty of planets that's out there right now. They might be desolate, which probably they probably did have life at one point, but not no more. Not no more. You know, not no more. And God just sitting around with the real estate, like, what am I gonna do with this? This human thing didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this human thing didn't work. That's this why he created dinosaurs first. Hmm? No thing he was like ever. You ever wonder like why he created dinosaurs? Like, let me see what this does. Like. These are toys right now. Yo, you built like a little brontosaurus right now. <laughs> a big diesel ass brontosaurus right now. A little buff bronto. Okay? Right now. I'm going to be honest Yo, with you. I punch buggy white. I'm going to punch y'all right now. <laughs> I, think, I think God sits around with his team. <laughs> with his team? With, with Jesus them. Yeah. And I think that they are having conversations about <laughs> and I think it's one person on this team that keeps telling God, you know what you keep messing up at? This free will thing. <laughs> if you stop, stop doing giving it, these people free will, they stop giving them. these creatures free will. Why do you keep giving these creatures free will? It's the free will that's ruining it for all of these different planets. Facts. Now, you can give animals free will. Animals mind their business. <laughs> animals just do the circle of life thing. For real. Animals just do the circle. You don't see animals bothering us. You can be in the ocean right now with a boat and a five-ton whale will not knock that fucking boat over. That's a good point. Whales mind their goddamn business. They do mind their business. Mind their motherfucking business. Most creatures mind their business. It's us. Yeah, we don't do that. It's uh, it's these goddamn humans and these, these, these uh intelligent, Ooh. what do they call it? Intelligent life, even all all life is intelligent. It's us yeah. with this free will that keep fucking this shit up, yo. He might have a point. I'm yo. telling you. Why are you acting like that's animals it. don't attack? This mad alligator attacks, shark attacks. But that's when you go, when you take your stupid ass and they You're in the swamp. You're in their house. Ain't that's no breaking and entering. Up your, walking up to your door looking for war. <laughs> shit. You ain't never heard of a fucking alligator doing a home invasion. <laughs> <laughs> but humans, <laughs> we do it. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Uh, so to answer your question, how do we think the world's going to end? I don't fucking know. And bro. no humans. thoughts on the solar eclipse? No. It's going to be humans. With humans, they're going to end the world. What solar Facts. eclipse? Cl solar eclipse is coming on Monday. That's all. Well, I got to go see my daughter. That's right. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots and don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank Peace. You for